It's your ACW World Heavyweight Champion and SSW Equality Champion, the Picture Perfect Assassin, the Sharpest Blade, Chris Slade. You are a very agile wrestler. How did you hone your agility? Not gonna lie, third grade. Uh, anybody asks me, how'd you learn flips? I do all that. Uh, third grade. I just saw a lot of kids like doing these back flips, and I was mesmerized by it. I was like, you know, the Matrix was like really, really big at the time, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I don't try that. So, uh, I couldn't do it correctly for life of me for months, and then I finally started to get good at it, and then just started putting my own spin on it and stuff like that. And I always wanted to wrestle, so it was kind of one of those things where I was just like, I used to play with like plush dolls, little beat-em-up dolls and stuff like that. I won this, like, it had to be every bit of, like, five feet uh, Batman uh, that had the stuffing in it, and I could just use that as, like, a, a like, you know, somebody that I could beat up when, when I was in the WWE or something like that, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and it just, so I just kind of practiced the moves and stuff like that. But, like, I think I've always been kind of agile just by nature, I think. Do you believe the African-American community is properly represented in professional wrestling? I would say it's better than it has been, but I'm sure there's always room for improvement. I'm not saying, oh, every you know co top company has to have a black champion. I'm not saying that at all. Not to take anything from like you know, your Bobby Lashley's, your Kofi Kingston's and things like that, um, where like it was historic for them to do this, but let's make that the norm. Why is it, you know, let's make that the norm. Why is that odd that we see a black champion on our television screen? You know what I mean? Once that stops being, like, you know, a surprise to anybody, I think I think that's when we're, I think, we're like, oh, yeah, we're properly represented, you know. You were temporarily blackballed from a lot of companies. Yeah. Do you mind going into details about it and give us your side of the story? There were some things that came out about me b between me and my ex. It was... To say the least, a t tumultuous relationship, and that's putting it mildly. It was toxic. That's the proverbial word. It was very toxic, um, uh, but it was also very abusive, uh, verbally, uh, um, uh, physically, uh, emotionally. You know what I mean? Where it comes into uh, where I got blackballed was because I decided to leave. Uh, I decided to get out of the situation that I was in. Most of the time when you want to leave a situation that's abusive, you get the, you pack it, or you got kids involved or whatever, you pack up the kids, you get out and run, and just end up. With my situation, it should have been a lot easier than that. Um, but it wasn't, you know, I, I still had bills tied to where I was living. After a while, like, she wasn't able to handle those bills on her own. I knew all these things, and I knew that would all come back on me, and I knew that like, I'm not a heartless person, so I, I did not want to just leave all that around, but I did have to leave. I also, in between that time, I fell in love with, with someone, which caused uh, a bit of a lash out. And for that time, it caused her to lash out online, saying all these things and pictures. I never personally saw them. I never got to. And honestly, it didn't matter to me what she had said. I was getting enough from people and what. But I hear it, and I'm um, just like, okay, I ignore it. I ignore it, I'm just like, whatever. Like, there's no way. Like, y'all know, I, I know who I am. People, my friends know who I am. And I, w I thought it'd be fine, whatever. Um, through, through this time, though, um, I am still in contact with, the per with her. Um, the reason being is because I, we had struck a deal to uh, pay rent together, as we always had until she was able to move. That was the plan. I had fell behind because again, I'm living at two different places. I'm living at one place, but paying for another, you know, and helping out a little bit because, you know, who I was living with at the time were very gracious. They understood where I was, my situation, but I still needed to get back on my feet. And uh, I was putting up most of the money uh, for the apartment because after this, she had got furloughed. So she couldn't pay anything at all. So yes, we were still in contact, and uh, it had been some time since we had spoken because I had gotten most of the money, and I just wanted her side, her half, and that's where things kind of, kind of popped off. That's where uh, saying that you abused me in this, and I, 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 uh, I was confused. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was confused. I was a little like, what's going on? We were two people that 
loved each other. But I think we loved each other in the wrong way. I was not a perfect, I wasn't a perfect person in our relationship. I, dude, I, I, I hid things the where I should have said, when I should have spoke my mind. I, I, things like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, and I have lied. I, I, I have done that, dude. I have done that. Uh, time goes on. I get blackballed from a lot of companies because if you guys have a, someone on your roster that's being accused of doing something, uh, a heinous or anything like that or illegal, you don't want to have them on the on your roster, you know, until everything gets sorted out. Most of the time, I understand that, and I, and you know what, I understood it. I took it. I was just like, okay, cool. I know what I did, and it sucks because this is what I love to do. This is all I've ever really wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to. Yeah, you, you got your kind of dreams. You want to model. You want to act. You want to do this and the other. And dude, I, I wanted to act, but dude, this is what I want. L. I also wanted to be a superhero when I was a kid, but you know, um, this is the one thing I knew I could do. Um, and I, for a long time, I didn't think I could. It was a domino effect. Um, because later on, after the online comments, um, I had to go pick up taxes. And uh, from that place where she lived, uh, and I got attacked there, which caused me to get a restraining order. Honestly, I didn't necessarily want to do. Um, because I had gotten a restraining order when we were actually living together prior. I just never... I, I went through with it, but I just never went back because I didn't want it to escalate because I knew it would probably escalate, which I probably, in hindsight, probably should have done. And turned out uh, we had a hearing and I still won the case. Three days later, I get, um, I get charged with uh, three counts of assault. <laughs> that even made things worse for wrestling because now it's not just hearsay. Now there's some le there's legalities involved, and that's very difficult um, as a promoter to be like discern. Can I use this guy in good conscience, knowing that it's gotten to this level? Which again, if you're a smart businessman, no, no, you're not. I understood it. I understood it, and I knew what the situation was. It took a long time, but very. Uh, I went through with the court charges, and I. I happy to say that I uh, won the case you know I uh, I was not I was I was cleared of everything and um, it was actually dismissed the day before I got before I got there because just the evidence that I had was too uh, was I had too much evidence on, on the table but it was a, it was a and it was a sigh of relief because it was like I could get my life back you know what I mean like I because wrestling had already started to come back for me you know what I mean like people started to see that okay yeah this this is all died down. This is stupid. We don't even know what happened. We, we weren't there. We didn't see anything. So we can't really judge it. But when I got past the court, I really felt vindicated, really, because it was just like, not only do these people that I work for see, but, you know, finally, even legally, this is the second time now I've been proven to be innocent. You know, when you talked about your time of being blackballed and you yeah. kind of got into it a little bit. What was the story with the restraining order that you took out? Um, so, like I said, I had two restraining orders. One when we were actually together and one after the fact. Um, the one that I got in when we were, were in the relationship uh, was I was told to get done by the police. Because I had called them after um, a situation had happened but once she had left for work. Uh, because I really didn't know what to do. Like, a lot of people think, like, oh, why didn't you go through the restraining order the first time? Now, the one thing that people don't realize is that, and, and I don't know if you, you know, I was in a situation, it was kind of tough for me because at the end of the day, I do love this person. You know, I want things to turn around. This was my fiancé. And I didn't know how bad, why we, how we got to this. I mean, I do understand certain points, yes, but this bad, like, just, just leave, it would break up with me or something like that. And, and I didn't want that. I just, but I, I did want this to stop. And so I went to go for a restraining order and they told me they were going to have court martials. Now, here's the thing. Now, the people that, the, the police never came to issue it because if I just said there and say, oh, I got a restraining order on you, oh, dude, that was, that was going to end, that was going to end really badly for me. <laughs> it was going to end really badly for me. So I was, so I was fucking terrified. Like I was, I was kind of twiddling my thumbs that entire, that entire night, uh, and week, honestly, because they said it was like about a week and they never showed up. And I thought we kind of got ourselves to a good place and which was, which was 
fine. But the and then the biggest reason I was like I didn't follow through was because look at the end of the day, dude. She had a she has a son that was taken from her, and I knew it was important to her that she got him like got to be more time spend more time with him and. Her having a restraining order on her or any type of charges or anything like that, it doesn't look good in, in her trying to get more custody of her sons. And I thought I thought about that as well. So I didn't go through with that, but the one I went through with was now the one is after. So I went over there to come get some things. It was a situation where she was crying and upset. It takes through, you know, maybe 30 minutes of talking, which is legitimate. Like, it's, everything's fine for a second, and I'm, I'm thinking she's opening it up, and I'm like, all right, cool. And then, boom, a, flip, a switch flips with a question, a very inappropriate question that was asked to me. And I decided, I was like, oh, I know where this is going, I'm gonna leave. Went to go find, try to find my taxes, and it got physical. She was, I was getting throwing things thrown at me, this and the other, got close, got close, and like, then that's when she just kind of went in. And I pried myself away. Um, I lost a couple of dreadlocks in the process. I, oh my gosh, and I'm very, anybody knows me, I'm very anal about my hair. So I'm like, that was just like the worst way to me. Like, like I came out with like all these scratches on my face and shit, but like, I was like, no, but my hair. So after that, I gotta go pick up my girlfriend and she's looking at me and she's like, what's going on? And then uh, a, a mutual friend of ours, uh, which is also a friend of my ex at the time, told me to come to his place. And he said, well, he was on the phone with her at the time, and she was saying whatever and was like, I see his face, but I see his face. Like, this was wrong, but I see his face. I walk my ass down to the courthouse, put it in. When you go to a, for a restraining order, you get a protective order, and it's temporary, and then you have to go for a hearing to prove why you actually need it. So you actually have to prove that you are in some type of danger being around this person. Now, mind you, all I wanted to be at this point was left alone. So I was just done with everything, like with all the internet stuff, with and this, the way my face was looking. Just, I was just like, I was tired of it, man. So I have to go and show the judge all my evidence. And then she says her piece and says everything that she had to say. And she admitted in the courtroom that she uh, had laid her hands on me. And not out of self-defense, but like out of like, you know, frustration and that's all and everything like that. So she refused to sign the restraining order though. Because when you go in there, you have to sign it and everything like that too, you know. She didn't sign it. One of the places that continued booking you through yes. this tumultuous time in your career uh -huh. was Superstar Wrestling yes. based out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Yes. Can you tell us about your time there? Uh, I, I love it there. Um, I love that they keep pushing to want to be better. You know, um, I love that they're very respectful of all the talents. They're, they're well, at least, I, I can only, well, I can, I can say for me, you go know to I mean? Like, I, I, they've been really respectful to me, even when the situation, you know, they, they called me and I, which again, understood. They were just like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. And then they called me back. They was like, you know what, never mind, screw it. We're gonna, we have your back. I was always very, very appreciative of that. Um, they, they'll call me and ask me if, I, if I'm okay with the angle or if I want to do this or want to do that, you know what I mean? Like, do I want to defend this person? Who do I think about this guy or just another? Like, you know, they, they have respect for me and, and the, 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 the talent that they believe that I bring to the, to the company. And they have gotten better. They've gotten uh, so many good talents uh, up there uh, and, uh, and recently. As you've continued to build your career back, now that you've basically cleared your name, yeah. You become a mainstay at Adrenaline Championship Wrestling out of Maryland. Tell us about your time there. It was, it's kind of crazy because that was the first place that uh, Chris Slade was Chris Slade, you know what I mean? Got to do him and, and, and got to be, uh, just got to be in front of like a large crowd like that. Because up until that point, I hadn't really been uh, uh, to, in front of a crowd that large before. Um, and honestly, uh, I, that was actually my first real match oh dude i was honored I, I i i was i got on the show i finally figured i didn't know if i was gonna be on the show or not i finally i was told to come up and just do everything that you need to do as you you know you're training and everything like that and i did that and i get on the show and i am second from the top and the light heavyweight championship match 
But I knew I had to go out there and I couldn't do anything less than kill it. That was in Hanover. And they couldn't have been more welcoming. You know what I mean? They didn't know who I was before, uh, before them, but by the end of it, they did. And they, they let me know they did. And that was, it was amazing. And I, I can't, I, I can't say that that's changed, honestly. Uh, every time I am in front of an ACW crowd, they always seem to uh, be very receptive, responsive, let me know what they like, what they don't like, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I, just, I just enjoy it. I love it. In addition to becoming a mainstay at Adrenaline Championship Wrestling, yep. you recently won the Adrenaline Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Championship right. in Hagerstown, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that moment and what it meant to you? Here I am, the, the Friday before my court date. I'm here. I know I'm cashing in. That's all I know. You know what I mean? Because you know how wrestling is. Things change. Everything that happens that night, the, the amazing crowd, my family's in the crowd, my, my girls are in the crowd, but I, even friends from college that I didn't even know were there were there. And I do that. I win the belt. Off a move, honestly, I don't do often because, you know, I kind of wanted to be special and I always kind of picture myself, if I ever won the belt for eight, like specifically here, I would probably win it with, you know, with that particular move. The reaction that everybody had for it, we're happy and everything like that. That's literally a week before my court date. So I win that, I'm excited, I'm happy. Like this marks honestly a new beginning, not just for my career honestly, but just in my life in general. But I knew I still had that one last thing to take care of. And for me, it was, it, I felt like it kind of hampered it a little bit in the back of my mind. Because I've still got to be all business for just one more week. Because I wasn't, I wasn't worried about like what the outcome would be. I was just more so just like, okay, I just need to get this done. And I'm done. Then I can go anywhere. I can go. I don't have to worry about going to uh, GCW, AEW, WWE. They're looking up something. And, oh, this I can't use this guy because X, Y, and Z. No, don't got to worry about that. You know what I mean? So I could take this. And I can continue to represent as a proper champion. You get what I mean? Because I, I don't take that responsibility lightly because at the end of the day, like, you know, I, I'm a huge, hugely busy dude. If anybody doesn't know, I, like, you know, I'm a very busy guy. To think about all of that stuff that, all of that going on in that one moment, all those things on those thoughts in my head in, in, in that moment winning it, I was like, this is one step. To the, like this was like this was like a stepping stone into like the rest of my life in a way. And what better way to 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 you know have a stepping stone is to win a championship. With the rise of deathmatch wrestling oh, around the the business lately, okay. what is your opinion on ultra violence or deathmatch wrestling, as you will? Am I signed? Am I signed? I, hey, I you know. That that's that's my that's my opinion on a deathmatch match wrestling. If they ask me, hey, are you you, you gonna do a deathmatch? I'm not. Am I signed anywhere? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I and that's that's not any disrespect to anybody. I have done hardcore match style matches before. I've done I've fallen on thumbtacks, uh, bar and I've done the bar wire and, and and things like that. Do I like it? No, no, I don't. But I, I, it, it's I, I do acknowledge there is something in wrestling. It's a niche. I don't do them um, unless you got a really big bag, and I'm and I'm talking really big bag for that. Um, so uh, all companies that uh, want to pay me a really big bag for that, absolutely, you can get the picture perfect assassin. Absolutely, thank you. They're like a car crash; you kind of can't look away, though. I and that's why I have the respect for it because I know I'm too much of a <laughs> to do it myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. Dude, I am not as tough as you. I'm not even going to pretend to be. Maybe if the money is right, but outside of that, no. You're God among men. I'm just a worry, like, you know, traveler. You know what I mean? Um, because your, your pain tolerance is amazing, and I can't do it, and I don't think I have the testicular fortitude to do it, so. What do you believe, personally, is your best match? Can I just give maybe, like, a top three, maybe? Of course. Okay, um... My match against Grimm at C3W, that, that, that match taught me a lot. 
about myself, uh, a lot about, you know, because if anybody's worked Grim, anybody knows that he is intense, he's very meticulous, uh, he wants his shit right, and I knew that going in, and I did not want to uh, fail. Now, mind you, failure is not necessarily a bad thing, you know, you learn from failure. But this is a particular one I did not want to fail. The crowd reacted exactly, if, if not better, than how I was ex expecting them to react. And everything seemed to go so well. And it was just one of those nights where like, everything was finally on all cylinders for the most part. I can definitely say, like, yeah, I, it, it, it built me. One of my better matches probably be Fatal 4-Way with uh, Will All Day, Jordan Oliver, uh, and Christian Casanova, as everybody probably now knows him as Carmelo Hayes. We get there to the venues at this little bar thing. It's like a rated R show, which is awesome. Like, that just, it's just fun as hell. And we're in Phoenix right now, and we're just, just trying to get everything going. Like, these guys already know what they're doing. I'm sitting here, the odd man out, and I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm super nervous. Flip Gordon's here. I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm super nervous. I'm trying to take everything in. And, so, and also do these moves. Like, I'm so nervous. I can't even get my uh, my my moves out. I'm like, they're asking, oh, so what are your moves? I'm like, my moves. Right. Yeah. So, um, and, and then we, I, I like, maybe, I don't know, something happened. Um, I don't know. People, there was a lot of smoke going around. So maybe I was just buzzed and I was just like, I, I don't know. So maybe, and then I got outside and I was, that was, my mind was clear. So I was just like, okay, cool. I'm here. So, because uh, like 10 minutes before the match, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to do this, 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 this. We go out there, we do the thing. And uh, there was one botch on me, but it was because the lights shined like all in my eyes when I was going for a dive. It was crazy. Um, but we still did the dive anyway. Uh, it just didn't look as cool, which me, I'm a stickler for detail, so whatever. But we went in there and killed it. And it was one match where I learned that I don't have to doubt myself so much. And... Just because these guys look really, really good, that that does it, what do you think they look at you when you see you? You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it, it was just like, dude, you guys are all good. You get what I mean? And you shouldn't be intimidated by how good these guys are. You know what I mean? Uh, it should excite you. Because that means you're going to learn something. Ever since then, like even for the rest of that tour, like for it was just like, I was just, just on another level. You know what I mean? And I just really enjoyed it. Now, for my third one, and I, I'm just going to say this because it's like in recent memory, I, I won't say that I think it is the absolute best match I've ever done, but it's, it's one of my favorites, and because the high that I was on after, I was in ATCW, go out there to a monster reaction, don't expect that by, by the way, I'm like, oh wow, they know me here, great. Against Grizzly O and Bam Willis. Now, anybody knows a Bam? He's a heat magnet. So anybody that goes in the ring with him knows they have an easy night if they're a face. They have an easy night. They don't got to do anything. And on top of that, he's not just a, he's just not just oh he's a good heel, but he can work. He can work his ass off. Grizzly O, I've never been in the ring with him, but he was a good big guy. He's a great big guy, and I had seen that from him, and I was like that I can work with that. That's awesome. And we always said we wanted to wrestle each other, so we finally got a chance. And we did this match, and it everything went according to plan. Everything went perfectly. Everybody was on their spots, their cues. The, the crowd erupts after the win, and it's just like, oh, man, I think we done did something here. You know what I mean? And then we went back, and we went to the back, and we were just like, and they just told us, I can't, I can't follow that. Like, there's no one here following that. What is your funniest road story? Um, I was out, me and Acton were at Outbreak, and we had to go to get, I think I had to go get baby oil, okay? Yes. Baby oil. This is wrestling. Baby oil. Mind you, I, I, um, and I don't know what this says about me, but I'm always used to having women in my car. So, when it, we're coming from the Family Dollar, I open his door, and without realizing it, I'm like, here you go, man. I'm like, oh, shit. He's like, wow, you're so polite. And I just realized what the f I did. And I'm like, I, I, I was like, you know, but chivalry isn't dead, guys, even for the gentleman. Man. Do you believe professional wrestling is a dying art? No. Absolutely not. No, I see new people all the time. Always somebody, old, young, middle-aged, it doesn't matter. 
I see them. I see somebody that was inspired by every time I uh, every time I go to a show. Someone's inspired to wrestle. You know what I mean? As long as there are people like us that are going out in there and just having killer matches and making people feel the energy so much so that they want to do what we do. You know, put their bodies on the line. You know, uh, every weekend and some days day after day or you know whatever the case. Miss their families and shit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I don't think there's no way. There's no way in hell that wrestling is a dying art. I think. And if nothing else, I think, um, you know, the AEW um, All Out show probably proved that as well. There have been a lot, it feels like there's been a resurgence in a lot of ways where we're of excitement, I should say, in wrestling, where it's like, oh my God, anything can happen now. You know, you got New Japan guys at AEW, you got TNA guys in AEW, you know what I mean? Like, you got NWA and then TNA, and they got, you know, it's just so much mixing and matching. Yeah, WWE's on its own, just on other, but like, you know, there has been. Recently, there have been some good stuff, man. That you know, you see, you see, you all you brought back Becky Lynch, you all you brought back back Brock Lesnar. You got Finn Balor. You're actually pushing him for once. Okay, great. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, it, which is so it's kind of like waking up WWE in a way. It was like, hey guys, we actually like guys like Finn Balor and things like that. And it, it when you push guys that they people actually care about, uh, people get people excited. And people more the more people are excited, the more people want to show their fan their friends like, hey, this is so cool because they believe it's so cool that maybe their friend would like it, and then they become a fan, and it's another just another man. Like, yeah, it's it's not a dying breed at all. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you for you. giving the uh, the kayfabe junkies a little piece of the the assassin known as Chris Slade, yeah. picture perfect yeah. assassin. Uh, I am on. Facebook, uh, Dorian Womble, D O R I N Womble, W O M B L E. That is like that is the the shoot name, as they would say. Um, also on Instagram, Chris underscore Slade twenty five. That is my Instagram. I am I'm a huge into cosplay, and I'm obviously wrestling, so you're gonna see a lot of that. Um, I also have a TikTok, which I don't use very often, but I do make some type of content for that, which is uh, at Dorian Womble, so you can look me up on that. And Twitter is uh, ChrisLay25, which, don't ask me about the numbers, man. I, I just I just made it because I, I, I did really good at GTS, and I thought it was kind of cool. So, yeah. Which I plan to be back. So everybody that's been asking me if I'm going to come back to GTS, yes, I am. <laughs>